That's ice cold. Okay. <laughs> What's up? Mariana here. Thanks for coming back or welcome to my channel. Good morning, good afternoon, maybe even good night. Today is a very, very gloomy Sunday in Brooklyn. Apparently, we're supposed to get snow soon, but I don't see any yet. I figured on a day like today, what's better than making a YouTube video? That's right, as you can tell by the title of this video, I'm going to be doing my January wrap up of all of my favorite things. Well, not all of my favorite things, because if it was all my favorite things, this video would be like two hours long. We're not doing that. For my favorites, I've kind of split them up into different categories. They're kind of basic in the sense of books, films, TV shows, clothes a little bit. There's a, there's a nice, a nice range. So if you're interested in hearing about my favorites for the month of January, keep watching. Let's get into it. Of course, if you've watched any of my videos before, I always make quick disclaimers in the beginning. First things first, I don't have a fancy microphone. I'm currently, actually, filming this with my ottoman on top of the bench by my window with my camera on top of it. So let's pray to the gods, whoever it is for you, that this doesn't fall and break my camera. So because of that, and because I live in Brooklyn, if you hear the occasional honk, car, random people screaming outside, please, please bear with me. Because my second disclaimer is actually nothing really too serious. I just wanna point out the fact of how epic my plan is. Guys, I never thought in a million years that I would be not just a plant mom, but like a successful plant mom. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so for my favorites, I've kind of categorized them as books, films, and TV shows, clothing, and then extra, just others. My idea for it was that I would go through the things, kind of list them off. Some of them I have physically here with me, some of them I don't. Obviously, I don't have like physical movies, but you get the gist. And I figured I would give a quick little synopsis or why I liked it, as well as maybe a rating out of 10. Sound good? Great, Gucci. Let's get into it. Why am I still drinking this? This coffee is nasty. Okay, so first things first that I wanted to start off with, I figured is the largest and most important category, which is books. If you haven't watched any of my past videos, I am trying to read more. I read a lot more than I usually did in 2020, and I'm trying to continue it into 2021. I don't know if I've mentioned, but one, I will link my Goodreads username down below. Please request to friend me. I think that would be awesome. I think it's so cool to see what other books people are interested in and like what their reading goals are. For me, my reading goal for 2021 is 40 books because here is my rationale. I tried to do 50 and realized that that was not a smart idea, especially since the fact I hadn't read that many books in so with 2021, I wanted to try to be a little bit more rational, and my rationale was this. Trying to read at least two books a month plus an audiobook. So if you do that, times 12 months, you get 36. And then I figured, why not add the extra four, making it a factor of 10, keeping it at 40. You know, because sometimes we all go through those moments where we like pump out a couple books, at least that's what I do. So that's my goal. And I actually have been pretty much sticking to it and almost more on track, which is amazing. So let's jump into those. The first book that I read is Song of Achilles. I don't have it with me. Um, it's currently at home because as I've mentioned before, me and my mom are kind of doing this like tag team book reading situation for 2021. So I gave it to her to read. For this book, I would give it an eight out of 10. Song of Achilles is a modern day version of one of the more notable Greek mythology stories. It talks about Achilles and Patrocles and their friendship and kind of more than their friendship, as well as, you know, Achilles being this, you know, all high and mighty because he's like half God, half mortal. And there's this whole prophecy that he's the best warrior and they send him to the Battle of Troy. It's a masterpiece. It's so beautifully written. And the interesting with this book is that I had always heard about it. I always had like an interest in it, 
but I think I was kind of standoffish because I didn't know how I would feel about the Greek mythology part, mostly because in high school, I, I'm not gonna lie, I really didn't like the Iliad or the Odyssey. Not huge fans of either one. So because of that, I was kind of like, I don't know if like, if this is a good idea. I ended up buying the book and then basically had it for almost six months before finally reading it. And I'm so glad that I finally did. I will say it's a little bit slow in the beginning, but please stick with it. I think what's also really nice is that the author does a really good job for people, individuals like myself, who don't really know a lot about Greek mythology, you know, making it easy for them to kind of follow and also gives like quick little refreshers of each kind of character when they're like reintroduced. So in the end, you're barely ever really confused. I mean like, I don't know about you, but I just think back to high school reading the Odyssey and just thinking, what the hell is going on? And you don't feel like that at all in this book. And of course, I will make the disclaimer too that maybe this is just me because I do have a tendency of finishing books at like two in the morning and I am more emotional at that time but you will ugly Kim Kardashian cry. It is going to happen, but in a good way, kind of, I guess. The next book that I wanna recommend is Clap When You Land. This book I would give a 7.5 out of 10. I also don't have this book because you guessed it, it's at home. This book is very, very interesting and has an interesting story about how I kind of got it. So Columbus Day weekend, I went and visited my sister and her boyfriend in Boston. And when I was there, I saw the book on her shelf and was kind of interested by the name of the title, figuring, you know, it was kind of maybe like a pun, maybe towards like white people, like clapping when the plane lands. I don't know. And to my surprise, that is not at all, at all what this book is about. The book is actually structured kind of like a giant poem. Or I guess that's technically prose. Don't quote me on that, I don't know if that's accurate. But the baseline of the story is that you have this male individual who was flying from the United States to the Dominican Republic. And on that flight, he dies. This is not a spoiler, this is like, happens within five seconds. It's the kind of whole point of the book. And so the storyline goes back and forth between these two young female individuals and it kind of unravels how this one man connects the two of them, even though they didn't really know it. And it's just, it's so, so beautifully written. The structure of it makes it go so quickly, but there's still not a lack of depth. It's still a very emotional book, a very deep book. And the bigger reason why I point this out is because it's actually a young adult novel. So here's the thing. Here's the gag. I am 24. Technically, I don't think I'm the target audience for young adult books. However, though, I don't think that should limit you from reading young adult books. Because first things first, I am not that old. Sometimes I feel like 24 is really old. It's really not. The second thing is, is that there are plenty of young adult books, i.e. example, this book, that are just so beautifully written and are so just beautiful all together that I think no matter how old you are, you can connect to it in some shape or form and really get such a wonderful experience out of reading it. So for me, this book was a really great like refresher on just how great young adult novels are and that I shouldn't completely kind of like push them to the side, like maybe consider them like a little bit more. So the next book that I read, I do have with me and it is this book. So this is Homebody by Ruby Carr. I really, I hate to say this, but I would give this a five out of 10. I, it really pains me to say this because I am such a fan of her work. I mean, Milk and Honey, I, I mean, words can't even explain how much that collection of poems like means to me. I've even seen her in person recite her poetry and it's just, oh, oh, so good. So maybe because of that, I went into it with really high expectations and I just was so disappointed. Here's the thing, are there some, as you can tell by my tabs, 
good poems? Of course. However, though, the issue that I had, though, was that there were some filler kind of poems that seemed a little... Mm, they gave me much very the vibe of, like, 2012, 2014, like, Tumblr vibes. Plus, on top of, listen, do I know how to draw? No, I am not good at drawing whatsoever. But I think in comparison to the other illustrations that she does, if you don't know that, she does that for her um, collections of poems, the ones for Milk and Honey are just like so much more specific and intricate. I don't know. Listen, I think the wrap up for this would be, if you are a fan of her work, definitely read it. If you don't know anything about her and are interested, don't read this one first. Please read her other collections first and then maybe come around to this. But yeah, I'm sorry, this just like wasn't, wasn't it for me. The last book that I read for January is this one. So this is called Pretty Little Wife. If you haven't watched any of my past videos, which, what are you doing? You should. Just kidding. But actually, if you haven't watched it, I did mention how I participate in Book of the Month. Book of the Month is like a monthly subscription. You get one to two hardback cover books. They kind of give you recommendations of what you should read. This was one of them. So Pretty Little Wife is a story about a woman and a man who from the outside obviously have the most idyllic, perfect relationship. Just, just kiss, wrong. Um, of course, that's not the case. There's a whole load of baggage that like unravels in this book that is insane. But basically it starts off with the husband going missing. And that's really all I can say. I honestly don't want to say any more. I don't want to risk me spoiling anything because this is such a good book. I highly recommend it. As someone who's like not a super like criminal mystery thriller kind of person, I actually really, really enjoyed this. Like to put into perspective, Pride and Prejudice is my comfort movie. So stuff like this, not really my cup of tea, but I actually really did enjoy it. I don't think I gave this a rating, did I? I would give it a eight out of 10. Now, segueing off of physical books, let's talk about audiobooks. Specifically, let's talk about Libby. Libby is my first favorite of kind of my miscellaneous other category. Libby is an app that you can download for free on your phone and you sign up with it. And so you log in with it through your library card. Now I know you're probably saying, Mariana, who in the hell so has a goddamn library card? I do, and you can too. It is so easy. Prior to this, I actually didn't have a library card. I signed up through the Brooklyn Public Library. It literally took two seconds, it's free, and you just get an e-card, an electronic card. And as I said, through Libby, you log in with it, and the amount of books and audiobooks that you can get for free. Are you listening to me? F-R-E-E, -E, for free. For me, that is the primary reason why I got the app. I really wanted to integrate more audiobooks as I talked about with like my 2021 reading goals. And Audible is expensive. It's not cheap. You can also get audiobooks on like the books app, like through Apple if you have an iPhone. But even those aren't cheap either. I mean, basically an audiobook, buying one off of like the books app, is the same equivalence of buying like a hardcover book. So it's like, I don't, mm, I don't understand, no. And the only kind of thing with it that can make it maybe like difficult, I guess you could say, is that because it's through like a public library, you have to put things on hold. And once they become available, then you get them. But here's the thing, I currently have from Libby the audiobook for Becoming by Michelle Obama. Side note, amazing. Now, when I put that on hold, it said two weeks that I would get it, right? It came in six days. So I think they project it just to be more, God forbid, 
but I don't think it actually really takes that long and then you get it for I think 21 days I think I have it for 21 days yeah which is like I think a decent chunk of time I mean if you're listening to it every day you'll definitely finish it before 21 days and again it's well free I can't even what I can't even explain it so if you're trying to read more audiobooks is a great way to do it and if you want to do it without spending money you should download Libby so next for miscellaneous I want to talk about this this is my weekly planner um, if you watched my video about like a realistic day in my life I talk about it um, I got this off of Amazon it's part of bliss collection I will leave the link for this again but what I like about it is the structure of it. I like that it's a weekly planner. So as you can see up top, you put like what the week is, like the dates, and then you have Monday through Friday and the weekend. You have a habit tracker and notes. I also like too that it has a built-in kind of tracking your water, tracking if you worked out, and then you can do your own habit trackers. So I like to do ones of, did I listen to my audiobook? Did I take my vitamins? You know, did I use my hatch? Now, let's talk about clothes. For clothes, I have just one thing to share, and that is Rent the Runway. Rent the Runway is a company that you can sign up for with a membership where you quite literally rent the runway. No, but in all seriousness, you have an opportunity to rent clothes um, for months at a time of really high-end, nice clothes. If you want to, like if you like an item, you can buy them and by being a member, you can get a significant discount, which is pretty awesome. For example, this sweater that I'm actually wearing right now is a Polo Ralph Lauren sweater that is over almost $200, which I would never buy if I was in a store. But with Rent the Runway, I have the opportunity now to try it out and wear it. And other examples of it are if you watch my Being More Eco-Friendly video, that green sweater is another example. And also in my realistic day in a life too, I think at the end of it, I'm wearing that like big puffy, like furry jacket with like the white stars on it. That was also Rent the Runway. Rent the Runway is also great too in the sense of from when I go back to work, which who knows when that's going to be, I can rent clothes to wear for work that are more business casual, which is really awesome so that I don't have to spend a fortune buying clothes in relation to that. I think I may have like a referral link, meaning like if you sign up, you get like a discount. Um, if I do, I will link it down below and try it out if you want. And now for the last and final part of my favorites, let's talk about films and television shows. So there have been kind of a handful of things that I've watched, but I want to specifically point out two things. The first thing is for films, the Before Trilogy. If you don't know, there are three films called Before Sunset, Before Sunrise, and Before Midnight. Each movie stars Ethan Hawke and Julie Dupli. Dupli? I think it's Dupli. And so the first movie was made in 1994, Before Sunrise, and it's kind of the catalyst for the next two. In that, in the first one, you have Ethan Hawke's character and Julie's character. They meet each other on a European train, and they kind of spark up a conversation, and they start talking and start bonding. And then as they approach Vienna, Ethan Hawke's character has to leave. But as he's leaving, he kind of makes a plea to Julie Dupuis' character of, hey, listen, I really like you. I think like we're really connecting here. We're really bonding. Hey. Um, and I don't leave to go home to the United States until tomorrow. And I don't have a hotel. And I was literally just going to walk around Vienna all day. Would you want to do that with me? And surprisingly, she says yes. And that is kind of the whole basis of the movie. It's them just spending that time together, of course, falling in love. For the next two films, you see them kind of reconnecting over time spans. But before Sunset, I believe, took place in like 2004, and then Before Midnight was 2013, 2014. So it's really cool to see kind of like these increments of time go past and see these characters obviously change with age, but also develop as people. You really kind of feel connected to them, like you know who they are. I would say out of all of them, I definitely think 
The first one was my favorite, obviously just because it's kind of like the origins, the catalyst of it all. I didn't mind the second one. The second one's a little bit sad because they kind of wrap a lot of emotions about the time separated from each other. And then the last one was interesting. I feel like I didn't enjoy it as much, maybe because I am still young and I am still kind of in a hopeless romantic kind of mindset where it definitely delves into more them being, you know, grown as adults and kind of what comes with that. So last favorite that I have for January, and let me tell you, certainly not least, is Pretend It's a City. Pretend It's a City is kind of a docu-series about Fran Lebowitz. Where do I even begin with Fran Lebowitz? She is such a character. She is such an interesting person. I personally absolutely love her. I do know that she's not everyone's cup of tea, so like, ew. just try it, try it. Basically, the docu-series is just kind of an inside look in her life and specifically also her relationship with Martin Scorsese. He's the one who directs and kind of created the whole docu-series, but she's just like a really, really cool person. I mean, kind of almost like Patti Smith level, but just more opinionated and less like free-spirited. Does that make sense? Like, similar vibes in the sense that like she moved to New York City when she was young. She literally had like no money, kind of made her way into like these interesting crowds and would then land a job at Interview Magazine writing for it with Andy Warhol. On top of, she is a very, very strong kind of entity of what it is and what it's like to be the most authentic version of a New Yorker. Just all of her points of views about New York City are, yes, rather like pessimistic, but when you actually break down what she's saying, it makes a lot of sense. Like so many things that she was saying, I was like, yep, I, that has definitely crossed my mind at one point. Like, mm, okay, you know, I really love the fact that she is so honest, so opinionated, plus the fact that like her look is so iconic and she literally has not changed it since she was like 20. I mean, she has the best suit jackets ever. Like I really want to know where she gets them. Also not gonna lie, within like five minutes I was like, she's a Scorpio, isn't she? Sure enough, her birthday is a day after mine. I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh, that is not surprising, that is very on point. But it's on Netflix, if you have Netflix, it's only seven episodes and each episode is like 25 to 30 minutes so it's not super long and honestly for me it was just a fresh reminder of why i live in new york city and why i love new york city period well that's it you made it through the video if you stayed this long thank you for staying this long if you did that's it for this video thank you for watching i'm gonna try my best to link as many of the favorites that i said in my description box below please please check them out i think they're really great especially libby please check out libby like if you're someone like me who's really trying to read more please check it out it's absolutely life-changing but that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I will see you guys for my next video. Whatever the hell it will be. I really have no idea. But, but, bye.